all the terminology we run into as programmers can be overwhelming and a little intimidating. I put together a list of 50 definitions that I feel every programmer should at least have some knowledge about. If there are any you feel I missed, be sure to leave them down in the comments with the definition. I'm gonna try and go over these as fast as possible because we've got a lot to cover. So let's get into it. Number one, an algorithm. This is simply a set of steps to use to complete a specific task. They add logic and decision-making to your program. API or application programming interface. A set of actions defined by a system or program. Other programs can then use this API to retrieve data or perform some type of action. The program that uses the API doesn't care about how the action is implemented, but just that it gets done. A bug, an error, flaw, or fault in a computer program or system that causes it to produce an incorrect or unexpected result or to behave in unintended ways. The term originated from a moth getting stuck inside of a computer, causing it not to function properly. A bit, short for binary digit, a basic unit of information used in computing. A bit can have one of two possible values, usually either a zero or a one. Byte, a unit of digital information that most commonly consists of eight bits. A byte is used to encode a single character of text in a computer. For this reason, it is the smallest addressable unit of memory in most computer architectures. ASCII, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. It's a system for electronic communications. It has 128 numbers that stand for either a letter of the alphabet or a symbol. ASCII is a standard that's the same all over the world. Data structures. They're a specialized means of organizing and storing data in computers in such a way that we can perform operations on the stored data more efficiently. Examples of data structures are linked lists, hash maps, and binary trees. Array. A data structure consisting of the collection of elements stored contiguously in memory. Arrays are known for their simplicity and the ability to quickly retrieve and update elements. Big O notation. Used to classify algorithms according to how their runtime or space requirements grow as the input size grows. Basically, it gives an idea of how fast or slow or how much space an algorithm takes as the input size grows. A compiler, a computer program that translates code within one programming language into another language. It's commonly used to translate code from a high-level programming language to a low-level programming language like assembly or machine code in order to create an executable. Cookie. This is the data sent by an internet server to a browser. Each time the browser accesses the same server, it sends the data back as a means of tracking how and how often it accesses the server. This is why when you log into Netflix, you don't have to put your password in every time. Cache. This is software or hardware that stores data so that future requests for that data can be served faster. The cache is a subset of the original source of data. Debugger, a tool that allows you to set breakpoints in your code, which you can use to step through each line and find exactly why and where the bug is occurring. Executable, a program that contains a set of instructions in machine code that is ready to be run by your computer. Garbage collector, a form of automatic memory management. The garbage collector attempts to reclaim memory which was allocated by the program, but is no longer being referenced. It was introduced to simplify manual memory management to minimize potential memory leaks. IDE or Integrated Development Environment. This is a program that takes common developer tools and combines them all into one single application. An IDE normally consists of at least a source code editor, a necessary compiler or interpreter, and a debugger. Some IDEs also contain a version control system. Machine code. Any low-level programming language consisting of machine language instructions to control a computer's CPU. Each instruction causes the CPU to perform a specific tasks on one or more units of data in the CPU's registers or memory. OOP. Object-Oriented Programming. This is a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects, which contain data in the form of fields or properties, and actions in the form of procedures or methods. Open Source. Software that's free for anyone to use. The code for open source software is available to developers who want to work on it. They can make improvements and add features. Pair Programming. A technique in which two programmers work together at a workstation. One programmer writes the code while the other observes and reviews the code. The two programmers can switch roles at any point. The next one is a combination of procedure, function, method, and subroutine. This is a sequence of program instructions that perform a specific task packaged as a unit. This unit can then be used in programs wherever that particular task should be performed. Recursion, simply a function that calls itself. Anything that can be done iteratively can be done recursively, 
but beware because this makes your code susceptible to a stack overflow error. Generally, recursive methods are more elegant than iterative ones and require less code. Virtual machine, a virtual environment that functions as a virtual computer with its own CPU, memory, and storage. Typically, it'll be an operating system that sits on top of a logical instance of hardware hosted on a physical device. Web crawler, a bot that systematically browses the internet. They're purposely operated by search engines for the purpose of web indexing. This is how search engines like Google get their massive list of websites. IP or internet protocol address. This is a unique address that identifies a device on the internet or a local network. You can think of it similar to a mailing address. This is how your internet traffic knows how to get routed from your computer to the website you're visiting. DNS, domain name system, a naming system for computers and services connected to the internet. It translates human readable domain names like amazon.com to machine readable IP addresses. Version control, a tool used to keep track of changes to code and files on a website or app and allows the user to go back and restore earlier versions. Git and Subversion are popular version control tools. GitHub, a provider of internet hosting for software development and version control using Git. It lets multiple developers contribute to a project at the same time, and it's for that reason why many people host their open source projects on GitHub. Exception handling, the process of responding to the occurrence of unintended behavior during the execution of a program. In general, the exception breaks the normal flow of execution, runs a special block of code that the programmer has written to recover from the error. Virtual memory. This is the unused memory on the hard disk used when certain applications require more RAM than is available on the machine. VPN, virtual private network. This gives a remote device a secure tunnel to a private network, as if the device were directly connected into the network. It's often used for telecommuting workers or just if a user wants to hide the traffic they're visiting. Tor, the onion router. Similar to a VPN as its purpose is to allow you to browse the internet anonymously, but instead of going through a proxy server like you do in a VPN, your traffic is routed through a network of internet nodes. Although its intention is to protect the privacy of its users, it's often used for illegal activities and accessing the dark web. CLI, command line interface a program that processes commands in the form of lines of text. It enables users to type commands in a terminal or console window to interact with an operating system. RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. This provides an interface between users or applications to store, query, and retrieve data from a database, as well as admin functions for managing data storage access and performance. Some popular RDBMS tools are Microsoft SQL Server, MySQL, and Oracle. SQL, Structured Query Language, the standard language for relational database management systems. SQL statements are used to perform tasks such as create, read, update, or delete from a database. Pull requests, a method of submitting contributions to a development project. A pull request occurs when a developer asks for their changes to be considered for inclusion in a project's main repository. Code review, the act of checking a fellow programmer's code changes to make sure there are no mistakes and the code adheres to certain standards. Code reviews are typically done as a result of a pull request and must be approved before the code gets included into the main repository. HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This is the standard format for transferring data across the internet from one IP address to another. It's used for transferring things like authentication info, images, really any data you want to transfer from one entity to the other. JSON, JavaScript Object Notation, a lightweight format for storing and transporting data. It's formatted using key value pairs and it's the most popular way to transfer data across the internet. It's usually added to an HTTP request or response. Script and scripting language. A script is a program or sequence of instructions that is interpreted or carried out by another program. They're generally lightweight programs that can be easily whipped up, but not always. Examples of scripting languages include Bash, PowerShell, Python, and JavaScript. Camel case and snake case. These are naming conventions to make your code more readable and consistent. Camel case involves capitalizing the first letter of each word in a variable, the first word being optional. Snake case requires an underscore between each word in a variable. Cloud computing, a platform that helps developers deploy and host applications in a live environment without the hassle of managing their own storage and servers. Popular cloud computing platforms include AWS, Azure and Google Cloud. MVC, Model View Controller. This is a software design pattern commonly used for developing applications that divide 
the related program logic into three interconnected elements. The view is the user interface, the model is the data, and the controller is the logic on how the view and model interact with one another. Pointer, this is an object or variable in many programming languages that stores a memory address. Pointers are useful when you want to pass around large data structures. Instead of passing the entire data structure, you can just pass its memory address. Full Stack Developer. This is a programmer who has a high level of familiarity with every facet of the development process. So for web applications, this would be someone who's proficient in client-side, server-side, and database development. Web Hosting. Since users won't be able to access your website by going to localhost, web hosting is a type of service that allows individuals or organizations to make their website accessible via the internet. Pseudocode. This is plain language to describe the steps of an algorithm. Pseudocode uses structural conventions of a normal programming language, but it's language agnostic, so it doesn't care about language specific syntax. Unit testing, a software testing method by which individual units of code are tested to verify they are giving the expected outputs. They're used to test the logic of the code rather than external things like database calls or network requests. Thread, this is simply a unit of execution within a process. The real excitement around threads is that they're a way for a program to split itself into two or more running tasks that can run in parallel. Race condition, this happens when two or more threads attempt to mutate the same data, causing one of the threads to overwrite data updated by the other threads. All right, there we go. That's, uh, I hope that was 50. Uh, hopefully you guys learned something new or at least it was a good refresher. Um, I'm going to go catch my breath because that was harder than I thought. But if you're still watching, make sure you guys hit that like button. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep on coding.